Good morning once again YouTubers. Today we have something that uh, some of you may have seen elsewhere on uh, YouTube, uh, but this is the first one that's passed through my hands. This is an RCA sound tape cartridge player. The model number is a 1YB11 made approximately 1957, 1958, that general time period. And it's called a sound tape cartridge player. And uh, we're going to take a peek inside. I'm going to just open up the lid here and pull it off. Put that off to one side. This one is a little bit more complete than others that I've seen. Uh, this particular model came with a little holder, which originally came with a unit anyhow. It contains a microphone. And of course, that's the cord on the microphone. And I'm not sure if this came with it or if this was an accessory that you had to buy, but this cord is designed to plug into the RCA consoles because you could use this as a tape deck and just plug it into the RCA consoles to play through, you know, through the amplifier. So putting that aside for a second, if we look up top here, we have um, the record button, we have our track selector, the mic level, and rewind and play. This is an absolute bare bones machine. It's monaural only. It is not stereophonic and uh, as a result it doesn't play the stereophonic tapes very well. Uh, on the back of course it says RCA. Now in the later models this area would have been designated for a tape counter which is not in this bare bones model and you can select one of two speeds over here either one and seven eighths or three and three quarters as a speed. Now the standard in the industry is three and three quarters but if you want to record voice in particular then of course you're going to use the uh, slower speed and get more material on there. Looking to the side here, this is the size of the tape that this machine uses. This was an excellent design, one that just never took off, and a lot of that was RCA's fault for not licensing their product quick enough, and there wasn't much available on tape for the customers in 1957-58, right straight through the end of the, the entire series, as a matter of fact. There weren't a whole lot of tapes available. Later on, this would be the what would come become of that format. You went for, from the uh, standard tape that you would have in a reel-to-reel -reel recorder down to a thinner tape, I believe this is an eighth of an inch, and a much smaller cassette. This was what you would see later on to be used in cars. But an excellent design, one that should have taken off, and uh, too bad it didn't. It was a lot easier to handle than reel-to-reel -reel tape. You didn't have to worry about um, threading it. It's all built in there. Um, another accessory that came with this, which is kind of nice, is called the tape reel adapter. This is an RK-296 tape adapter. That's the uh, box that it came in. And that was quite a bit of money even back then, $4.95. And this is what would fit in over here so that you could pay, play three inch reel-to-reel -reel tapes. And you needed that to be able to go around here and bring it through and thread it through. Also with this came an earpiece. Not only the earpiece, but the adapter to plug it in along the side of the player. And if we look alongside the player, we have the internal speaker, which you can turn on or off. You have output to feed into an amplifier. You have input here if you want to feed some material in there to tape record. And you had a microphone control. Remember, this is a single microphone. This is not stereo. And your on-off volume control. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take and plug the unit in. Because uh, you need to go to the back to do that. And we're going to do that right here two-prong plug and we're going to basically turn the machine on along the side and we're going to put the tape in. Now this is somewhat an annoying tape but it is monophonic so it is going to work correctly so we're just going to drop this into place. Let me just put this down. Hold on one second here. We'll do that one more time. I screwed up here. That's what I get for this is live, folks. That's what you love. <laughs> Nothing like being live. There we go. Now I dropped it into place. I'm sorry about that. And uh, let's turn around and listen to it. Turn the volume up here. 15, 1, 2, 3, testing. This is the part of the scene where we waste the limit of time so that you can make sure the sound is on and that it is on just right. Not too low, or you won't hear me. And not too high. So that the neighbors on the next block won't hear all the wonderful 
wonderful things we're going to do here. Whew. You see, we want everybody to be happy. And that is why we give you a little time to make yourself comfortable. Just stretch a little, maybe. Get yourself a little eats while you're at it. Would you mind getting me a liver waist down the high with plenty of mustard on the side? Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to shut that off. Now, the one thing that does annoy me on some of these players here is the fact that the tape runs against the head in the rewind, which we're going to do right now. And then, of course, it shuts down. Um, that is one thing that I dislike about some of these RCA players. They continue that on even into their better players. And I do have a better player that I'll be putting up later on and uh, showing you. It's a stereo player. It's a rather large tabletop model and uh, they produce several models in their lineup uh, they're just difficult to find this one of course like I said is absolutely bare bones the next one up uh, would have been made with a counter I believe and uh, stereo and then they had another model with a built-in stereo speaker as an extension uh, they even at the end of their reign had a, a solid state model in stereo uh, in fact uh, one of those is on uh, Rich, Rich's uh, DeSoto uh, 1961's uh, site. He has one up there now. So there you go. Um, like I said, uh, these particular models aren't really scarce. There are plenty of them out there. But this is an absolute bare bones model for Monoral only. It's great if you want to record some stuff in Monoral. They're just not very good at playing back stereo tapes. So be aware of that should one fall into your hands or should you find one that you would like to buy. So, another great piece from the 50s. Hope you enjoyed seeing something once again that's a little bit out of the ordinary.